Good morning, everyone. It is 9.02 a.m. February 1st. It's a brand new month. Already February. So um, adios January. Here we are. I hope everyone closed out January with a strong month. And just a quick reminder, if you have any um, paper applications that you did over the weekend, um, you know, please make sure that you turn those in ASAP this morning. Um, you can either send them directly to the carrier for the most part, um, uh, but you can also send them to Jessica or Cindy, and we'll be glad to process those paper apps for you this morning and get them set up for Janu or, uh, February 1st effective already as we start to begin our March for March sales, right? So we're working for 3-1 effectives already. Um, but, you know, there is training going on, so let's start that off like we always do. So on the training calendar this morning, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So if anyone is following along, you guys can, uh, you'll be able to see the screen here as well. So let me do that for you. So first things first, this morning after our call at 11 a.m., you've got Devoted. They're doing their broker and coffee chat session. Again, this is really for you to get questions answered if you have any situations or you need support for Devoted Healthcare in any market, you can call in at 11 a.m. The link is in our training calendar. All right, Golden Outlook, our partnership with them. Um, they are doing OEP training sessions, so if you need a little bit more hands-on or you're not kind of grasping OEP or you have more questions or specifics about OEP, they're doing several trainings this week. The first one is today at 1 p.m., so you can jump on there and uh, join the training session. Again, the links are in the training calendar. Tomorrow at 11, they're doing it uh, again, that OEP training session, 11 o'clock. Again, these are all virtual training sessions, easy to get to and just log in. It's about an hour long, so um, it shouldn't put you to sleep, I hope. Uh, also tomorrow, February 2nd, at 1 o'clock, Health Sherpa is doing a special training for those of you that are offering ACA individual family plans. They're doing a special training on the upcoming SEP, and we're going to talk about that this morning because uh, President Biden has opened up an SEP. So we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. Uh, but Health Sherpa, our enrollment platform and quoting tool, They'll be doing a training session at 1 p.m. tomorrow, February 2nd. So jump on that in order to get more details about what that means for you during this um, pop-up open enrollment for ACA. Wednesday, February 3rd, WellCare is doing their own OEP training. Uh, but specifically, if you're looking for information about WellCare, if you have questions, concerns, you can jump on there. That's at 3 o'clock on the 3rd. Again, the link can be found in the training calendar. Thursday, February 4th, Golden Outlook is doing their thing again with the OEP training at 11 a.m. Um, at 11.30, Devoted is doing their coffee and chat session. So that way you guys can jump on there and learn everything about Devoted. That session's um, going to be geared for the Jacksonville market. But again, anyone that offers, offers Devoted is welcome on the call. On the 4th, also at 1 p.m., Golden Outlook is doing their final OEP training this week. Again, just making sure you understand who can enroll and how to use SEPs properly in OEP. Remember, we're in OEP right now for Medicare all the way until March 31st. So that's at 1 o'clock on Thursday. And then the last training of the week on Friday the 5th, WellCare is doing another OEP training so again, lots of OEP training. Why? Because I think what's happened is, is everybody's kind of getting back in gear. The holidays are over. Your, your clients are calling. Maybe they're upset with their plan. It didn't work out the way they thought it would. Um, but you have an opportunity to make one last change for your clients to get them enrolled. But you've got to know what you're doing. Okay, so please make sure that if you're a little shaky on OEP, uh, join one of those sessions, and, and hopefully um, that'll that'll clear the cobwebs for you. Um, but that's really what it's all about, guys, is making sure that you understand what's going on. Okay, so that's the training for the week. Please make sure that you have the training calendar loaded on your phone, laptop, or iPad so we can make sure that you have the most up-to-date training info 
and, uh, and you know what you're doing out there. All right, so the next order of business, we've got a training session, um, actually some, some big news about what's happening out there with, um, with, with what's going on with um, OEP, or OE rather. So President Biden has announced last Thursday that he is going to be reopening the health insurance marketplace. So what does that mean? If you have ACA clients or you have ACA prospects, individuals and families that are looking for health insurance, they will be able to enroll for February 15th through May 15th. So we have quite a bit of time um, opened up for this special enrollment period that President Biden has allowed. And this is because he's getting feedback from COVID that a lot of people weren't able to make changes. But um, this morning what I want to do is read through the initial note from the White House so you guys know exactly what the President signed and for what reason here. So this is a fact sheet. Um, the, the Biden-Harris administration will open a special enrollment period for Americans to sign up for health coverage and roll back attacks on the, health, on the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid, and access to reproductive health care. After four years of attempts to strip health care from millions of Americans, President Biden will sign two executive actions that will begin to restore and strengthen Americans' access to quality, affordable health care. The Biden administration will reopen enrollment to the health insurance marketplace to take additional steps to strengthen Medicaid and the Affordable Care Act and protect women's health. These actions demonstrate a strong commitment by the Biden administration to protect and build on the Affordable Care Act, meet the health care needs created by the pandemic, reduce health care costs, protect access to reproductive health care, and make our health care system easier to navigate and more equitable. For President Biden, this is personal. He believes that every American has a right to the peace of mind that comes with knowing they have access to affordable, quality health care. Because of the Affordable Care Act, over 100 million people no longer have to worry that an insurance company will deny coverage or charge higher premiums just because they have a pre-existing condition. Roughly 20 million additional Americans obtained the security that comes with health insurance and young people transitioning from school to a job can stay covered by their parents' plan until age 26. As we continue to battle COVID-19, it is even more critical that Americans have meaningful access to affordable care. The actions the President is taking today complement the commitment he made in the American Rescue Plan to make health insurance coverage more affordable for millions of Americans. Reliable and affordable access to health insurance doesn't just benefit families' health. It is a critical source of economic security and peace of mind for all. Today's actions include strengthening Medicaid and the Affordable Care Act. This executive order takes critical steps to reverse attacks on and strengthen Medicaid and the Affordable Care Act so they, may, so they can continue to provide access to life-saving care for millions of Americans based on the executive order. It is expected that the Department of Health and Human Services, which is HHS, will open healthcare.gov for a special enrollment period from February 15th to May 15th, 2021. The special enrollment period will give Americans that need health care coverage during this global pandemic the opportunity to sign up. The President will also direct federal agencies to reconsider rules and other policies that limit Americans' access to health care and consider actions that will protect and strengthen that access. Agencies are directed to re-examine <clears throat> policies that undermine protections for people with pre-existing conditions, including complications related to COVID-19, demonstrations and waivers under Medicaid and ACA that may reduce coverage or undermine the programs, including work requirements, policies that undermine health insurance marketplace or other markets for health insurance, policies that make it more difficult to enroll in Medicaid and the ACA, and policies that reduce affordability of coverage or financial assistance, including for dependents. As part of their reviews, agencies will consider whether to take additional actions to strengthen and protect access to health care. Protecting women's health at home and abroad, 
across the country and across the world, people, particularly women, black, indigenous, and other people of color, LGBTQ plus people, and those with low incomes have been denied access to reproductive health care. President Biden is also issuing a presidential memorandum to protect and expand access to comprehensive reproductive health care. The memorandum reflects the policy of the Biden Harris administration to support women's and girls' sexual and reproductive health and rights in the United States, as well as globally, like memoranda issued by President Clinton and Obama before him. It immediately rescinds the global gag rule, also referred to as the Mexico City policy, which bars international nonprofits that provide abortion counseling or referrals from receiving U.S. funding. In recognition of the additional work necessary to protect access to reproductive health care, President Biden's memorandum also directs the Department of Health and Human Services to take immediate action to consider whether to rescind regulations under its Title 10 Family Planning Program. So there you have it. That's what's, what, what's the news there as of Thursday. Uh, President Biden is working on those two executive orders, um, again, for protecting women's health and then also opening up that uh, special election period for those with individual and family plans. So what does that mean for us? Well, it's open season again, guys. So if you're selling ACA or you're not selling ACA, maybe this is the time to consider it. You've got another uh, Feb. You got fe all the February, uh, March, April, and all the way to May. So you almost have four months to start doing marketing and helping people enroll in ACA. Um, you know, if if I was getting into the business right now as a health insurance agent, this is exactly where I would start is ACA business because. Uh, number one, there's a lot more people to help. Number two, it's a lot less restrictive on marketing. And number three, commissions come quick and fast. So um, just one of those things to consider if you're not doing it already. Uh, if you do, are you, if you are considering doing ACA or doing more ACA business, um, please reach out to one of us and we'll be glad to set up a training session for those individuals that would like to learn how to do ACA. Um, it is absolutely outstandingly easy <laughs> these days, <clears throat> especially using Health Sherpa. So again, the Health Sherpa training session uh, is at one o'clock tomorrow. So don't miss out if you are wanting to learn how to use our enrollment platform. It's very, very easy. You just plug and play. It's simple. Um, and the good news is, is you don't have to do 19 different trainings. It's just one training for ACA, and then you just contract with the carriers you're going to represent. So no annual trainings for each carrier on ACA, so it's a lot easier. I actually feel that I think that's the way that Medicare is going to go one of these days. It's just one simple training, and you can just contract with the carriers that you would like to offer. So, so that's that on ACA. That's the news. Um, so gear up, get ready. You have about 14 days to start doing your marketing on social media, reaching out to all your individual and family plan members, even your Medicare members. Let them know that, hey, you know, there's a special election period. This is what the White House is saying, and we're going to open up February 15th, and that's obviously for uh, March 1st effective, April 1st effective, May, and then June. So just keep that in mind uh, as you're running through these SEPs, um, and, and it looks like everyone and anyone can change plans, add plans, join a plan, or drop a plan during that time period. So... Uh, it's open season, guys. I, I really hope that everyone takes advantage of this because this is a, this could be a whirlwind. Um, from a financial perspective, as an agent, this could mean an additional twenty to thirty thousand dollars in commissions a year, in residual commissions, which is why we do this business. Um, in ACA, I don't know why you wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, it's really, really lucrative. Um, and the commissions are comparable to Medicare now. You're earning approximately 20 to $22 per member per month. Um, and it's paid as earned, so no chargebacks, which is wonderful, right? So if you enroll, you know, 100 people there, $20 a pop. Um, now, it's 100 people, not 100 policies. So, you know, if you have two people on average per policy, that's really only 50 policies. It's an extra $2,000 a month. In residuals so um, something to really consider guys this is uh, it's a big business and and I know very successful ACA agents that are earning 
well over six figures just doing ACA. Um, so this may be your chance to get into the business. Um, this is it, okay? All right, we'll leave it with that. Um, jumping out of the ACA, we also have a um, quick note on WellCare. Just a note they sent last week that their over-the-counter benefits can be accessed physically at any CVS location. So depending on which plan they have, many WellCare members have an over-the-counter credit that they can call into WellCare and have their OTC items such as Band-Aids, aspirin, um, you know, those types of things sent to the house. And, um, and so you have lots of great items uh, that are mail ordered, which you know is safe, but <clears throat> WellCare has realized that many of the members go to the pharmacy anyway to pick up their medications, so they're now allowing um, the members to pick up their OTC items at CVS. So just quick news there. Again, they sent some more details in your email, so you can check that out. Um, thought that was a pretty neat thing that they're doing there. All right, on the last call, we were talking about you know how do you grow your business, and one way. Uh, obviously is being out into the community and helping people. Most importantly, what I call becoming a resource, becoming a community resource for not only your members, but maybe different church organizations or uh, senior housing facilities or doctor's offices. When you become the resource, you really will start to, to earn business because people are just going to send you um, clients to help. And it's not just about, you know, insurance it's about other things too but this all ties together with building a relationship with your clients and really bringing value and let me repeat that bringing value to your customers right and there's no better way to do that than becoming an, a full a resource and so what I want to share with you is a website that um, that we've mentioned before in the past but just as a reminder I want to share with you benefitscheckup.org again the website is benefitscheckup.org and this website is really easy to use. It's designed for seniors um, and those with, um, you know, critical needs. So on the front page here, you're going to see, you know, you just enter your zip code. Um, they've got some stats. Um, they've already helped over 9 million people and discovered $38.7 billion in benefits. And they tie all the community and federal benefits together on one platform. It's really awesome. So um, those of you that are following along online, I'm going to show you a quick demo here. So on the first thing is, is you just type in your zip code. So let's try 32808, Orange County. You click Get Started. It's going to ask you a few basic questions, you know, just making sure your zip code's okay. And who are you completing this for? So if you're helping a client, you can click Client, and there you go. Um, the gender. Um, What's the birth date? You know, the year and month is really all they need to know. So you just pick out the birth date there. Uh, and then it asks you about income, including yourself. What is the combined monthly gross income for your house? And so, you know, you just pick out, you know, anywhere from less than 1000 to more than 3000 a month. So uh, let's say that it's uh, between 1000 and 1499 You click that one. It's going to ask marital status. Say this person is single. Are they a veteran? And then they ask an ethnicity or race question. Again, it doesn't affect their results, but I guess they're doing a survey. Um, so let's say you know you pick one, and then you've got all these different benefits that they might be looking into. So let's say they need help with housing and utilities, um, and maybe food and medication help, right? Um, or maybe they need some help with transportation. But it's got all sorts of great things from income assistance to discounts and things for veterans. So let's say we click one for veterans. So that's it. That's that's You can see how quick I filled that out. It takes 20 seconds or so. Um, it's going to ask you to set up an account. You don't have to do that. So you just click no thanks. But based on the information that we plugged in today, they're showing that there's over 51 benefit programs available. I mean, unbelievable uh, just how quickly I pulled that up. I wish I had this when I was helping people because I had to go out and search for all this manually um, and then just by experience and talking to clients and figuring out what they had so I can share that information with other clients um, but you'll see it's broken into sections here so if you just pop open let's say the medication benefit um, you can see that they're talking about the LIS program here uh, the Part D program 
They've got a Florida discount card program. No idea about that. And then Pfizer has an RX pathway, so you can get information on all of those medication benefit programs uh, just by opening that up and then you just click the button out. Um, but things like housing programs and, and benefits for, for veterans. So you've got you know vener veterans pension program, veterans disability compensation programs, home loans. I mean, there's some pretty great stuff out there that I didn't know was out there. And so this website kind of just helps solidify all that so you can help your, your clients. So if you've been in this business a while, <clears throat> there's no doubt that your clients have asked you, you know, hey, I'm having problems with, you know, not just my medication and my health care, but I need a place to live. I've been asked that a lot. Or I need help with my light bill. Or I don't have a ride anywhere. I need transportation assistance. And so you'd look like a hero if you were able to, you know, pop in that quick information um, and see, you know, just right here, there's senior ride transportation programs and, uh, you know, Amtrak has, has discounts for seniors and, you know, all sorts of amazing things that I'm seeing on this, uh, on this website. So I really hope you guys take advantage of that. I think it's a, a fantastic resource and tool, and I think it will bring extreme value to your clients, which makes you look like a hero in the community, which you guys are. You go out there every day and you help people. Um, but this is a this is an amazing resource that that um, is actually um, co-run by the National Council on Aging. So, you know, this is official, uh, and they do have it in both English and Spanish. So, you know, if you click the Spanish link up top, um, you know, it just runs the information again in Spanish, so you can help those in need, um, and then you can send them the information in an email or or what have you. So, just wanted to share that. I hope. People take advantage of it, and um, you know, get the get the help that they need. All right, uh, moving along. Well, um, let's see here. Humana last week sent over a an email with their. Uh, it looks like a um, ten ways to video conference like a pro. So virtual sales. I know a lot of you were asking. You know, what do I do for virtual sales? And I want to share with you um, that Humana has a, a fantastic little one pager. Uh, so you can check your email and I've got it downloaded. We're going to also add this to the gold key. But I do want to share that with you as well. So let me pop that open. Hopefully I can share screen with you. All right. And we're going to go through this because we're getting a lot of questions on um, you know, what this looks like. There's there's quite a few people that were asking me, you know, what do I do for virtual sales? Is there, you know, something that I can read or or learn? And so, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to go through this. Um, they're calling it a one pager. Yeah, it's one page if you print it out front and back. Um, there's quite a bit of information on here. So I'm going to go through this real quick with you guys as well. So this is ten ways to video conference like a pro. Okay, there's a quote up here from Alexander Graham Bell. Before anything else. Preparation is the key to success. Plan to succeed. Flukes happen all the time, but when it comes to virtual meetings, leaving things up to chance could cause more headaches for you and your clients or prospects. So use these tips to help you prepare and plan for a successful video conference, whether you're meeting with one person or a hundred. We're going to come back to that for sales strategy because you guys could do virtual seminars, which is pretty awesome. All right, number one, select the right platform. Depending on what type of agent you are, you may have just one or dozens of platforms to choose from for your video conference. Opt for a secure platform with end-to-end -end encryption so that other devices or people cannot hack into the meeting or participants' data. Setting up a secure password for the meeting could also help as could turning off or relocating any personal assistance devices like an Alexa or Google Home, as well as cell phones, tablets, and computers to avoid any un and unintentional access to voice, video, or data. Here's some pro tips. Career agents may only use WebEx for video conferencing. Facebook Live or other live streaming services may not be used. So that's what the career agents or the captive agents are doing. They're using WebEx. But you've got a lot of them out there. You've got Microsoft Teams. You've got Google. Uh, we like Google. Um, I have use a free conference call here. Um, so there's there's lots of different ones. Just make sure that it's encrypted is what they're asking you to do. But um, 
you know, Zoom obviously is is uh, is another one that's out there. Number two, be transparent. Technology can be tricky. One minute the modem is cranking, and the next it's kaput. Technical difficulties will be a given. It's important to communicate to meeting participants that you'll work through issues as they arise together. Pro tip, have a sense of humor and playfulness about issues when they arise. Tech glitches happen. It, they do. I know we had one on Friday, but that's okay. We move on. It's your choice how you decide to react to them, right? All right, number three, act, uh, ask participants to prepare in advance. So ask them to download any software or apps in advance if required so they are ready to go on the meeting day. Here's a pro tip. Send them the client-facing video conference checklist from the Marketing Resource Center. So Humana actually has another one sheeter that you can use um, that is client-facing so they can jump on there and they're ready, right? So you're preparing your clients for a good meeting as you are preparing for your meeting. Uh, WebEx does not require participants to install software or plugins or download anything prior to use. So that's a quick tip there. Neither does Google. Um, so you don't have to download anything on that. It seems to be pretty easy to use as well. Number four, practice. Practice makes perfect or at least better. When you and your clients have had a chance to familiarize yourself with the platform ahead of the meeting, you'll all be more comfortable and the likelihood of technical issues may decrease. Practice also goes for your presentation. Ask a friend or family member to be your tester so you can use different functionality like screen sharing in real time and work through any kinks before rather than during a meeting. So if you do have technical issues and you're wanting to run a video conference and you have some questions, um, we have the wonderful and fantastic John Minotti who can uh, walk you through that. Sometimes he gets jammed up, so if you want to set up an appointment, or come into the office, he'll be glad to show you some tips and tricks on your video conferencing. All right, so here's some pro tips on that. If you choose platforms um, that has any tips, tutorials, or FAQs, read them first and send links to participants so they can teach themselves how to use the platform as well. Here's some training links you can use for yourself. So they've got training links in this, um, in this actual document. For those of you that are selling Humana, they sent you a link last week. Um, so WebEx, Zoom, GoToMeeting, Skype, those are just a few. Uh, create an agenda and send it along with any required materials to, to par participate in advance. So if you're doing, let's say, a Humana presentation, you want to make sure that you're sending them the Humana sales video and the actual plan benefits that you're going to be talking about so they can follow along with you. Um, if you're doing screen sharing, close all other tabs and programs and documents except for the meeting platform and the documents you intend to share, obviously. Um, learn how to do screen sharing, that's important, right? Um, if you intend on sharing multiple documents, practice transitioning from one document to the next, uh, turn off any desktop notifications before screen sharing, and don't forget to stop screen sharing when you're done using it. Okay. Uh, number five, use a strong signal. If using Wi-Fi, close any other apps, tabs, or streaming services, ask participants to do so as well. A pro tip, connect via an Ethernet cable to have the strongest signal. Um, yeah, just less errors, right? So um, wireless things go crazy sometimes, so Wi-Fi goes nuts. Um, I'm using a plugged-in headset uh, because sometimes the Bluetooth is spotty, so I just cut all that out and make sure I have a solid connection so I can hear well and they can hear me well. So, um, you know, just a tip when you're doing video chats as well. Uh, number six, choose a well-lit, aesthetically pleasing location. Make sure you uh, select a location that lights your face from front rather than behind. If you sit in front of a bright window, for example, you'll be a silhouette on screen and viewers will not be able to see your facial expressions. You'll also want to choose a spot that's easy on the eyes without being too distracting. In front of a bookshelf or a blank wall could work well. Some pro tips. Ask participants to sit where they are front lit so you can see their facial expressions during the meeting. Ah, we're salespeople, right? No, we're not. We educate. But reading people's expressions are really part of the process when helping them choose a plan. So being able to see participants' face will give you nonverbal cues that can help you adjust your delivery or explanations if needed. Right? There's no better way to communicate than in person. Um, but the second best way is by video here, um, and then by phone call, of course. 
Use a simple background filter if you don't have a good spot to give your presentation. So a lot of these Zoom meetings and all that have backgrounds. You can change the background so it kind of hides your background a little bit. Um, so if you have a blank wall, that's probably better because, uh, um, you know, I've seen folks that uh, have backgrounds and some of them are really cool. Like it looks like you're sitting in an office. Uh, you can make yourself look like you're at the beach. Kind of funny. So um, some pro tips. Um, oh, we already covered that. So let's scroll down. Number seven, put away distractions. Turn off the TV, radio, and any other distractions so you can stay focused. Um, have participants do the same. If you're giving a group presentation, mute the audience upon entry in case some people don't know how to mute themselves or forget to do it. it happens all the time. That's why I mute everybody in the beginning of this call so those that are listening uh, and, and want to um, listen in, they, there's no distractions on the phone, no, no sounds. Uh, pro tip. Real life distractions like pets or family members may occur with, uh, as with technical issues. Keep your sense of humor about it. Most of us have become forgiving for such bloopers. It happens. It's life, right? Um, put your video camera at eye level. Most computers and laptops come in with built-in video cameras. If you don't have that, you can easily get a webcam online. Um, I know a lot of them were back ordered, so you know um, I think they're starting to kind of get refilled there. Um, you can, you may need to raise your camera or computer up to eye level by stacking books or a sturdy box underneath. Doing this will help frame you in the shot so the participants see your whole face with less background distractions. So laptops, they make laptop stands. They're relatively cheap. You can get them for, you know, 20, 30 bucks online. Um, I'm actually using one right now. It raises it up a little bit so it's not sitting down on the, uh, on the on the uh, desk directly. It also helps to make sure that your your laptop doesn't overheat, uh, which happens a lot when you're using these video um, tools. Okay. Pro tip: Look directly into the camera. It may feel weird, but it simulates eye contact in a face-to-face -face interaction. Speak slowly and clearly, enunciating syllables and slowing your speaking cadence will help participants understand you. You'll want to pause more frequently and check in with participants to make sure they are following what you're saying. Pro tips again, if you feel yourself rushing or getting anxious, try pausing for a few deep breaths to get back on track. Confirm period periodically that participants can still hear you and see you or your screen share. So I always ask, can you guys still hear me? Everything good? Connections good? Can you see my screen okay? You know, are you following along? Checking in makes a big difference because otherwise you're going to lose people and they'll get disconnected from the call mentally um, if they're not able to follow along. Almost done here. And number 10, ask participants to engage. When you engage with your participants, they are more likely to keep paying attention because their presence and involvement is needed. It changes the presentation from a monologue into a dialogue. Engagement switches the dynamic from talking at participants to talking with them. Pro tips, have participants use the chat function if available in the platform or make a signal like a wave if they want to ask a question or make a comment. Some platforms have a hand raising function or allow participants to directly message the speaker. This is going to be more towards webinars uh, and seminars versus one on one interactions with your clients. Obviously, you're going to have pretty much an open mic situation on one on ones, just like you would be on the phone. Um, you know, if they're talking or they have a story to tell you or, they, or they're going through their stuff, and you have background noise, you can go ahead and mute your mic while they're talking so that way they can kind of concentrate a little bit better. Um, and same with them. You know, if you're going to go through a, a big chunk of the presentation, you can ask them to mute their mic or you can mute their mic, especially if they have background noise. And then call on participants directly to speak. So, um, you know, again, this is more for webinar settings. So that's it on that. Looking for more ways to leverage video conferencing in your sales process? The link for checking out more articles. Humana has become a great resource uh, in this new world on how we're doing our business. And, uh, and why am I talking about this? Why are we doing video sales? I know some of you are do still doing stuff over the phone. That's fine, but you know, I, I can't think of a better way to do a full video presentation. I think it will bring some value to you and your customers. Um, but as we roll out this new software system for Medicare where you'll be able to do your entire quoting enrollment 
situation online, um, you will uh, probably want to do more of these video calls. It's just a lot easier to get the job done and feel connected with your with your client. So I hope you guys take that and uh, and run with it. So those are 10 tips on how to do a good uh, sales presentation, virtual sales presentation with a video call with your clients. All right, last thing is, before I let you, uh, let you guys go, I'm going to uh, open it up for questions here in just a moment in case you have any. Um, I wanted to make you aware that looking at our numbers and specifically in, in the Florida market and even beyond, we're noticing that there's a huge trend in PPO business. And, and now looking in Central Florida area, we're, we've noticed that uh, the CMS numbers came back for, for most of the carriers and it was pretty neck and neck with HMOs. There was one or two companies that really, really did well. Um, and, so, and a lot of the companies actually lost business. And they didn't net business. Yes, they did enrollments, but they also lost a bunch of enrollments on the HMO side. But true growth, true enrollment numbers came from PPOs. So what I'm sharing with you today is that PPOs are on the up and up for trending right now it seems like there's more and more true growth from the PPO market versus the HMO market and I'm seeing that mature markets uh, specifically markets like Orlando where it's a mature market and there's a lot of plans here especially HMOs you're starting to see churning happening where the plans are you know this plan will gain a little bit here and this one the next year will gain a little bit there but they're all pretty much even for the most part right and so, but they're not really growing, growing, right, in a mature market. But we're seeing true growth on the PPO side of the business. So true growth numbers are coming from PPO. So what does that mean? So when your clients are coming to you, your prospects are coming to you, um, really do that, that deep dive, that needs analysis, because I'm seeing that PPOs are becoming more requested than HMOs at this time, especially in mature markets. So... Don't forget that you've got PPOs out there. There's some fantastic plans. Again, you know, uh, PPOs, just as a reminder, you've got, you know, the strongest um, known PPO uh, out there, I would say, is uh, United Healthcare. You've got Humana's got a strong PPO. Aetna's got a strong PPO. Um, but don't forget about WellCare. That's a new newcomer for PPO uh, business. And then Bright Health, of course, seems to be more of a PPO play than HMO play in their markets. So um, just wanted to bring that to your attention as you're out there talking to clients. Maybe a PPO might be a little bit better for them, especially if they're seeing quite a few doctors or if they're traveling a lot. You know, PPOs are a great fit. Don't, don't try to squeeze a square peg into a round hole with your clients, meaning that you're forcing them to go to an HMO. Um, you're just not going to have a good out, outcome on that, right? So if the HMO is just not a fit or you're a little dicey about, you know, doctors and how they're going to access care, it might be better to consider a PPO, especially when we're seeing trends and the competition has grown on the PPO market over the last two or three years. So keep, in, keep that in mind as you're servicing your clients out there. So with that, I am going to go ahead and open it up for questions. So if you have any questions this morning, I'm here to help. Justin, it's Mark. I have a couple of questions. Yeah, good morning, Mark. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my first question is the app report, the results that Jonathan sends us every few days, or every day, I don't know exactly. It gives the position, uh, 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 each of our positions. doesn't give the, uh, the number of apps. Is that a permanent change, and why is that change? Yeah, um, we're, we're kind of experimenting with that a little bit, Mark. Um, we've had some good feedback and we've had some bad feedback about sharing numbers and so some people are a little sensitive with the exact number of, of clients that they're enrolling so um, we're going to make a, a semi-permanent change on that and um, and see how it goes and see what the feedback's like here in the next month or so um, but as always if you need your exact numbers um, you know, I would just check in maybe twice a month just to check in on your numbers. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're counting that you did 10 and uh, you just want to make sure that, that, that you've got 10 um, reported, 
Uh, you can always shoot John an, an email, and he'll be glad to get back to you and say, yep, I've got your 10 here, you're good to go, or it looks like we're missing one. Um, so yeah, we're working in conjunction with John as, as normal, and we'll be glad to, to check in and make sure that you've, you've got everybody enrolled. My, my second question is, uh, we have two months left in the OEP. Uh, when are you going to do the postcard mailing? Yes. Um, so if you have not gotten your postcard mailing, please get with Sergio. I know Sergio has been working on that with his team. So um, you, could shoot, you could shoot to him an email <laughs> reminder and just copy me, Mark, and I'll be, I'll be able to follow up on that for you. Thank you, Joe. You got it. Hello. Good morning. Hey, this is uh, Will. Can you hear me? Hey, Will. Hey. Um, going back to uh, what you were discussing with the uh, Biden change in um, the ACA, does that mean that they're going back to the original format where they're finding people as well? Um, you know, I'm not sure I understand the question. That, that they're doing well, the you know that, no, no, no. I'm referring to the um, to the, the penalty. Are they going to be because they're talking about going back to square one? Are they going to be, right. uh, you know, giving a tax penalty to people that do not enroll? It's a good question. They they haven't addressed they haven't addressed that just yet. Um, but I know that there's there's been some things happening with uh, ACA in certain markets. So I, I'm not sure how that will play, but I think they were addressing mostly in that, that article about Medicaid and Medicaid expansion. So, for instance, that too, right? But in Medicaid, um, especially Florida, we're one of those states that decided not to expand Medicaid. So because right. of the, the non-expansion of Medicaid, to kind of close that gap between Medicaid and ACA, we still have a gap. And the last time I checked, we had over a million people that did not qualify for Medicaid and didn't make enough for ACA. So they're kind of lost in that insurance gap there where they can't, they still cannot afford health insurance because they just don't make enough and they make too much for Medicaid. So I think that's the first place that they're going to address is just closing that gap in places like Florida where, you know, it doesn't butt up against each other like in other markets. So that that's one of the big issues that we have. Um, and then the uh, question regarding the uh, insulin. <clears throat> I know that uh, it was something that uh, was uh, addressed by um, the previous administration, and now he's talking about eliminating that provision. Um, do, you, do you have any... Uh, Insight on that, where they were dropping the the price for uh, insulin to thirty five dollars. Are you talking about for Medicare eligibles? Yeah, these are, well, you know, this is anybody that's using insulin. That the uh, price for insulin was being dropped to thirty five dollars uh, copay for uh, folks that were dependent upon insulin. So, according to the executive order that Biden probably signed. Uh, he's going back and reversing that. So, do you have any any insight on that? Because people are going to be asking us <laughs> the same question. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen any feedback on the insulin specifically, but I can tell you that the senior savings model does address what you're talking about on the thirty-five dollar copay for the insulin. Yeah. Um, so that program is out there and available. Select carriers do participate in the senior savings models, but not all of them do. So uh, the way to, to find that is um, a couple calls ago, we ran through a demo. So um, if you want, you can go back onto our, our uh, videos, and you'll be able to go in there, and, um, and you can see a demo that I did on how to get to that senior savings model. But it's at Medicare.gov, yeah. and, um, okay. and that's how you're able – yeah, there's a, there's a link – uh, when you're searching for plans and comparing, you can click that link and it'll show which plans are participating yeah. in the senior savings model. But to, to answer your question, it, will that be repealed? Uh, I don't see that happening immediately, anytime soon. Um, it seems like it's a pretty popular program right now. Uh, a lot of yeah. people are talking about it. It's starting to catch catch on and, and get some get some momentum. 
Um, but I haven't seen anything specifically saying that he's going to take it away. So, so to answer your question, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen anything like that yet. Hey, Justin, just uh, just to be clear on the senior savings model, it's it. Uh, the carriers have chosen to implement that by plan. So just because Humana is a participant, it's not across the board on all their plans. So when you check Medicare.gov, it's going to show you the specific plans by carrier that have that feature implemented within it. So don't assume if you see senior savings model on plan A, that it's, it's, it's going to be effective across all the offerings from that particular carry. It's very selective. And in the Orlando market, I don't think any of the PPOs have it. Okay. Hmm. No, that's, that's great info. And thanks, Tom, because I did not realize that it is plan specific. So um, there you go, guys. Make sure that, you know, yeah. it's, it's not across the board. You've got to specifically check on those plans. And like Tom said, it's, it's more geared towards the HMO products uh, and not the so PPO. So, so going, go, going back and addressing what Tom just mentioned, uh, there are going to be plans that do not support that uh, insulin savings, so therefore that's going to open up um, you know, an opportunity for those individuals that may be with, I don't know, let's say a freedom or a devoted that does not offer that $35 deal with the insulin uh, that that's going to happen. I mean, you know, people are going to be looking for, you know, and you as an agent or as a broker uh, mm -hmm. need to be paying attention to those individuals, maybe calling them up and addressing that concern because if they're with a plan that does not offer that, um, you're going to wind up losing because somebody's going to come along and say uh -huh. or mention that to uh, to them or whatever and or their friends and immediately – they're going to want to switch to something that's going to cover or address that problem that they may may have. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right, Will. That's exactly what what happens. So you want to make sure that you're saving saving them as much money as possible on on insulins. We all know that you know there's a a lot of diabetics uh, all over the country, and um, you know if, if what we're finding is is a lot of the diabetic uh, plans that are designed for diabetics, they have comparable coverage for insulin, but not all of them are made the same. So you got to do your homework as an agent and make sure that you're checking on their insulins and checking the cost. Um, and right now, you know, people have enrolled, you know, they've called Joe Namath and Joe Namath enrolled them and now that's not the plan they thought it was going to be because their, their medication shot up and their insulin wasn't covered like they thought it would be. And, you know, and so that's why we have OEPs because you know maybe maybe Joe didn't know you know Joe Joe knows football but he, he might not know Medicare right so um, that's right <laughs> so so uh, so make sure you know when you're meeting with people that that you're you're letting them know hey I can check on your meds and I can I'll do my due diligence for you Justin also a perfect example of what you were just talking about is devoted in the Orlando market has multiple who do not have the senior savings model but offer insulin at zero cost. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the even is it is, is is an example of you you guys and, and ladies out there uh, don't just go on one but every remember voted has plans with zero zero insulin. Which, yes. Which which plans? Devoted. Which plans did you mention, Thomas? I, I think it's on all their plans. I know it's on at least two because I looked them up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, insulin's a big driver for devoted. They uh, they've they've bought down on those on those medications um, for in, for insulin dependent uh, members. So so yeah. So even though you know you're going in there and and doing the senior savings model, that's just one place you need to cross check but also cross-check the actual plan benefits on the formulary that you're going to run for your members. Now, exciting news. We are investing in a all-in-one software system where when you plug in the medications, it will run a copay analysis to show which plan is going to save your members the most money automatically. 
So you'll be able to, you'll you'll be able on our new software system you'll be able to compare devoted with freedom with Humana with Wellcare all in one place and send out the quote uh, to your members and um, and so you can you plug in the information their medications and it'll save it in one place on our new system that we're rolling out and mm. and with that um, it will also pull the information from Medicare so if they have a Medicare account. Or if they don't, you can set them up with it. It'll connect to their Medicare account and pull the medications that they made a claim for. So if they're taking medications, if they went to the pharmacy, it'll pull that claim data and put it right into your software system to ensure that you've got accurate information on which medications they're taking. Because some of the times it's hard to hear what your members are saying over the phone with, hey, I take this medication and they're, you know, weird names sometimes it's hard unless you actually see the label um, or, or you see the name of it written out uh, so it's, it's hard to, to get those over the phone so um, just another tool we're coming out with uh, th this program we're hoping will be uh, rolled out at the end of February so this new software system that we're rolling out end of February and uh, those of you that have contracts with us uh, obviously, we'll have access to the software system. It'll make your life breezy easy when it comes to quoting and enrollment. So we'll talk more about that. We'll do a full training session on how to use the software system as soon as we're rolling out. But uh, yeah, so so Will, to answer your question, great great feedback, great input. Um, but yeah, guys, we still got to do our homework, and so those are some yeah. of the resources that we can we can look at. Oh, and, and just as a reminder, that uh, benefits checkup website that we talked about this morning, that is a resource to check for insulin as well. So they have, um, you know, discount programs available because sometimes people, they don't want to change their plan even though there's a better plan out there because of their doctor. I get it, but maybe there's another resource out there that they can use to lower the cost of their insulins as well. Hmm. Also, cool. Simply is a pretty good plan for diabetics. Yeah, we all we always forget. Uh, Simply also has a great diabetic plan. Uh, thank you, John. Okay. And any other questions this morning? Just a reminder: some of you hmm. may be on mute still, so just check your mute button if you have a question to answer or ask. I'll be glad to help you out. Um. <clears throat> Uh, real quick, that uh, ten point mm -hmm. uh, chart that you got from uh, that was from Humana, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, they sent it last week. So if you check your inbox, it's called uh, 10, 10 tips or te ten techniques to um, you know servicing your clients with a virtual sales call. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're go we're gonna load it on the gold key. Um, but if you if you can't find it, just reach out to one of us and we'll we'll send it over to you. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Justin. Um, I had an issue with my phone. I have a question on the uh, Google Meets. Is there a premium? Is there a fee if you want to use that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so Google Meet is the uh, video conferencing service that we use. Uh, the standard Google Meet. Uh, you do need to have a Gmail account to use it, I believe, um, to set up a meeting. But to join a meeting, you do not have to. Um, John, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But um, Google Meet is free. Is free. But I believe the person setting up the Google Meet has to have a Gmail account. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So in lieu of uh, Zoom, we can use the Google, the Google Meet. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. So there's a, and we, we covered this, um, you know, last year, but uh, comfortability is really what it's all about for both you and your clients. But, you know, find the one that you think your clients are going to be, it's going to be the easiest for them. Not necessarily for you, but for them. If it's easy for right. them, remember, guy, you know, they're the customer. They're the person. They're the end user. So we want to, we want to find a, a good solution for them. But if they're used to using Zoom because they're, you know, always talking to the grandkids or talking to their kids wherever, and and they're comfortable with Zoom and they know how to use Zoom, learn Zoom. You know, if that's not your thing, take a you know take an hour or two, learn Zoom, figure that out because 
it's going to make your life a lot easier for them because they know how to run Zoom, you know. So just something to think about. Um, you might have a lead one that you go to. I like Google. I think it's easy. I use Gmail for everything. I just plug it in my calendar, and, and it automatically sends them a link. Um, but again, wherever you're comfortable, and then most importantly, wherever your customer is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, guys, any other questions this morning? All right. Well, yeah, our call went a little longer, but I really appreciate the participation. Thanks for the questions. And as always, we're going to post these on YouTube. We are going to start uh, sending out a password, so you'll have to have a password to access the videos shortly, uh, but they will be out there. We'll send them out to our team. So thank you guys for being on the call. We appreciate it. We'll see you next Monday at 9 o'clock. Have a fantastic week, and happy February. Go get them. <laughs>